Condition. Welcome to another edition where Black History Matters here in Pensacola, Florida. And uh, I got my esteemed guest today that will get us on our monthly local Black History program, and that's Miss Robin Richard. Good morning, Robin. How are you, Shuka? I am great. What you say? What you say? I said, How are you, Shuka? Yes, I just went up an extra ten percent right now. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. And then, and then, in the words of Mamie Hickson, what Mamie Hickson didn't say, I'm gooder, gooder. Yeah, you, gooder. you gooder, huh? <laughs> you know, with that extra ten percent you just gave me. <laughs> yeah, well, very hashtag good. Sugar, Vernon yeah. Watson. Hashtag sugar. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. But I'm glad to see you. But I, I, we followed up on our promise. You know, we made a New Year's resolution that we will bring since there's an assault on black history in florida we decided that we're going to bring black history every month instead of in february so that's, right. that's a great idea and I, and I appreciate you for agreeing to do that for me since you have a of a local historian if you will and well uh, I'm, so one, I'm one of them we have a we have a lot of uh amazing uh historians researchers um nosy people like me who, who you know who just who want to know more whether it's their family history or their community's history or their church history or their business history um or their organization history you know it's so so many and they're as as you say in church in their respective places and it all adds to it it's aimed from uh uh louisiana so i i didn't know this till after i had my first cup of this a bowl of this when i got here but gumbo mm -hmm. uh, uh so we're like a, we're like a gumbo you know it at each each one can stand on its own right i love me some okra i love me some sausage i love me some shrimps and whatever else your onion whatever else you put in there i'm gonna get in trouble trying to make gumbo mm -hmm. but but we can each stand on its own and all together we make something that is so unique and each time even with those same ingredients depending on what little flavor you put in it can be different you know, mm -hmm. so so yeah, I had my first cup of gumbo at the dwarf. Oh, did back you? In the, uh huh. Back in the eighteen hundreds. I ain't gonna tell you what year, cause you know I'm twenty five. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I I hear you. I I hear you <laughs> loud. And I said say I hear you loud and clear. <laughs> uh huh. I thought, you, I thought you were gonna say I hear you lied and clear, but it's the same difference though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what though. Um, is it's amazing that you you say that uh and that's a good gumbo is actually a great analogy for our cultural differences uh, mm. robin you know you, you think about it for a minute and and as you were speaking i was thinking about the um what goes in the go goes in the gumbo and it takes all of those ingredients that you, you got introduced to it so but it took all those ingredients to go into a gumbo to make that great gumbo, right? Yeah. And but you know what the beauty of that gumbo is? What, what did you what What did you find in gumbo when you? So when I first start cooking, it, I would uh -huh. do the Holy Trinity, you uh -huh. know, the onions, bell peppers, and celery. Mm -hmm. So I, I I start with the Holy Trinity. Now I make Leah Chase's gumbo. Uh -huh. of the of the famed dookie chase restaurant uh god rest her soul and dookie so uh uh and she uses okra as the uh thickening deal it's still good gumbo lord have mercy it's some good gumbo mm -hmm. uh but when i you know what i found uh, out uh when i was doing the holy trinity i was trying to get it to that nice caramel brown color mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, all our smoke alarms was going off so <laughs> <laughs> I like that nutty brown flavor you try to get it to, and it it take me about a day to get that smell out the out, 
I have to open up windows and fan stuff and all of that. But uh, but yeah, so yeah. so so uh, either the Holy Trinity, the okra, I mean the um, the uh, onions, bell pepper, celery, or I use uh, okra as a thickening. But either way, you know, you add your your sausage. Um, sometimes I do chicken, uh, um, uh, shrimp, mm -hmm. maybe some crab leah chase said is whatever you got handy <laughs> right so okay you, you put it in there yeah so but 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 again i again what i was thinking about uh gumbo when you put all of that stuff into gumbo the all those different ingredients uh into gumbo every time you bite into that uh gumbo you can t like you say about like the uh like the bell peppers for an example, okay? When you know, when you you go into, when you taste that gumbo, you know when you you know that distinct flavor of a bell pepper. Or if you yeah. put shrimp in there, you got shrimp. If you put fish in there, so what I I guess what I was I was driving at, if you will, the 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 because of America, we have a multicultural. A society uh, that we are we're just like a gumbo okay That's we're just like a gumbo in the society it, it, I can't imagine if you want if you put just one ingredients in gumbo I don't know what it would be good as good as it was if you would put several ingredients in gumbo right yeah. so yeah. in other words uh, in other words if you, you if you just if you just put bell peppers in it and when stir it up and you have a bell pepper gumbo it's not as good so, but that, when you that's, put the, that's broth, that's broth. That's but even in even in broth, <laughs> even even in even in broth, you know, you got to mm -hmm. add something to bring out the flavors of of that. So we like um, ginger tea. So I make a ginger and 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 uh, pineapple uh, tea. But even mm -hmm. with that, depending on how sweet my pineapple is, I may add you know a little cane syrup, a little molasses, or a little honey to you know to bring it up but the the deal is is you still got the majority of that is that is that ginger and so you know when we and you talked about especially here in the state of florida those who are trying to either devalue or or not include or rewrite this this story about african americans not only african americans but other ethnic uh groups and thinking that it's going to take something away from their group Right. It, it 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 absolutely does not, and that's the that's the challenge. It's, it's it's like if you only think that yours is important, who's gonna? Was it Muhammad Ali who said, you know, they came for the 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 Jews, and I didn't speak. They came for the 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 Indians, I didn't speak. They came for the Native Americans, they came for the Black folks. And so when it was somebody to come from there, I think he rephrased it from someone else. But when it was someone yeah. to come and speak up for me. Is that right. no one no, was there no, because I didn't right. speak up for other folks. Yeah, exactly. so nobody's trying to 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 x out any culture or or any race because you're trying to include. It does not take away from your culture for me to add in mine. It is like gumbo. It just absolutely makes it better. We do not eat uh, what you say, bell pepper. We don't eat bell right. pepper for breakfast, for lunch, mm -hmm. and for dinner. You know, mm -hmm. not only is that is that palate is not even enhancing our palate, but it's not even providing us with nutrition. So right. it, it may sustain you for a, 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 a you know a week, but after mm -hmm. that, um, a month, your body's going to start wanting nutrition that um, you know protein provides, or that starch provides, or uh, you know you're going to need these other things. So you're going to start what they call wasting. You're going to your body's going to start turning on itself and i think mm -hmm. we've seen that <laughs> when you know when folks start turning on themselves because they're they're mad it's is really about the value within them but they're putting it external you absolutely know? So, so in in history we should not make these big eyes and little u's in in history <laughs> you know so so you ain't nobody trying to eat bell pepper for breakfast lunch and dinner you know much as i love rice I ain't trying to eat it for breakfast lunch and dinner i love me some rice now <laughs> right, exactly right. Well, you 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 are exactly right about this. So we want folks to, uh, in other words, I say, stay woke and, and know about you. History is important. 
we don't do yeah. this show for any for no reason. It uh yeah. again you you talking about uh old saying and old quotes and somebody and I don't know who who originated but I'm gonna repeat it that if you if you forget your history you're gonna doom to repeat it. And that's so, right. And that's that's what you know you put the that that stay woke and it's and it's 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 this whole conversation about what that is 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 is, is why is, is being aware it's, 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 it's not saying that you know it's like um uh, i'm gonna take this is probably not the best example but you mm-hmm. know you you ain't gotta drink my kool-aid but you gotta you got to be aware you got to acknowledge that i have kool-aid right you may not like my flavor right you may not you know i love me some red kool-aid I ain't drank it in years because i ain't 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 you know that that's been a minute uh, but i love me some red kool-aid but you if you like green kool-aid limeade or whatever mm-hmm. they call it great you know if you like orange that's fine but just acknowledge that i have a right to have my kool-aid that's right what it is and don't deny me uh uh my flavor because your favorite flavor is red um and i know it ain't red but people know what i'm talking about when i say red that's <laughs> you go, <laughs> go on the kool-aid and you it's like 70 things and you get this my flavor oh i want to try this flavor i didn't know they had this flavor you know <laughs> uh, so it is it's just it's being aware of of not only your environment um of others environment and respecting their right to to have not only their history and culture but their stories too so so even you know when i talk about history i will say something like you know we think or around or about because history is not (laughs) as we've been talking history is not black and white there's so many shades of it and all of them deserve to be explored even if you do not agree with the the shade you still deserve to to have that your history, your culture, your story explored. I don't have to agree with it, but you are on this earth. You're my brother, sister. I, I, I need to respect myself enough to respect you and allow you to have that story. I may disagree with it. I may say, well, you know, she's talking about red Kool-Aid over here and I like great Kool-Aid. <laughs> oh, okay. We we still like Kool-Aid now. I don't know why we started on this food and this gumbo and this drink, but... Uh... <laughs> Well, one of the things that you said, uh, uh, Robin, that's, that's so important. I think that um, whether you like the the history that you're getting, okay, uh, it be, you know, but it's still history. I, I don't like the results of world, but Vietnam. I didn't like World War Two. I didn't like slavery, but but all those just just those things that happen in in life, and it's a part of our history and. Right. We didn't. We need to know about it, and I think as right. as an effort afoot to not talk about those atrocities or the history that Black people suffered uh, in these United States. So I, I right. think I, I think that um, we should talk about it, and and you won't until you not, uh, establish some form of dialogue. Okay, then we were probably would never. Uh, this 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 history would be probably uh, hidden as well as um, is unbeneficial. I think we should. You know, I think it's healthy to talk about it and so forth. Right. I, I think folks think that I don't know what the real thinking is on the opposite side of 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 these folks that trying to heal what they call wokeness. It just, just politicized that word, but wokeness is nothing but like you be. Just think about it for a minute, okay? I guess they just the opposite of that. What do they want you to do? Stay asleep? What happened with <laughs> what did Rip Van Winkle do when he slept for twenty years? Okay, so the life passed him by. So yeah. again, we have to stay awoke. We have to be woke about what, and particularly about our circumstances around us. I, I, I can stay on this woke subject for a long time, but go ahead, uh, Robin. We're going to get into well, well, the history I wanna, of it. I, uh, well, I think it's, uh, was it Clint Eastwood, the, the, the Western, I don't know who, who wrote it, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. Um, uh, and so so you have to talk about each one of those. I have a sister who, who passed a few years ago, and she was our, after our father, she was our, she became the next family uh, and um, on, on this one line, uh, genealogy genealogist mm-hmm. and so and she liked she was a pure genealogist so she hers was records and where i like stories 
hers or was hers was records. And so I was I was asking her why we uh, our great grandfather's name was different than his brother's name and so she said mm -hmm. she said well she <laughs> you know we'd always we start laughing subsequently to this when she said well we knew it well, here comes a real story <laughs> she, said, <laughs> she, said, she said well she said um uh she said our granddaddy granddaddy uh will uh killed a, a man killed a white man and ran and changed his name and i said oh okay so our real our real last name you know that your mother's maiden name and so it comes around so so our real last name is this and she said well <laughs> so, so come to find out when i talked to my aunt who's still living born in the 30s still living she said she's the last of that of that uh, uh of of our direct line she's the eldest excuse me of our direct line Mm -hmm. And so she said, she said, well, here's the, and so I told her, I said, I'm, I'm thinking about writing this and, and doing this line, putting in narrative form. I need to understand. And so Kay would always say this. And so Aunt Johnny goes, well, <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't, they called him daddy. This <laughs> is her grandfather. She said it wasn't him. She said it was his brother. So she, mm -hmm. he took our granddaddy wheels, our great, our great granddaddy took the fall for his brother a different brother because he had had this record and so she said they would call oh. him bonnie and Clyde. so he took the fall left and moved about you know a uh, hundred miles or so kept his first name changed his last name and that's how we ended up in uh in in central arkansas and so on on that line and so and i said i said what <laughs> So, so it's this whole thing. So it's just the good, the bad, the ugly. So I'm so glad that they, you know, that they did this because here we come, you know, generations later, but it's also the, this factor that one of my great uncles, you know, killed him, killed a, a, a man, regardless of the color, but killed a mm -hmm. man. And so, and then my great grandfather took the, took the, 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 you know, yeah, late so we don't have to be, we have to acknowledge it. I'm not accountable to that deed but i have to acknowledge it i have to when i find out the awareness i have to acknowledge it so you know when people say well slavery wasn't my you know that wasn't my fault i wasn't born then not saying that you're accountable for it but you have to acknowledge it now right. if you continue with that same attitude and those behaviors that they did in the 1860s and before and then the subsequent when reconstruction was trying and then the jim crow deal if you continue with that same thing you're darn skippy you're accountable to that behavior and those attitudes that thinking that certain folks should ride in the back of the bus or they don't deserve uh, an equal uh an education they don't deserve equal opportunity they don't deserve civil rights you know whatever then you are accountable for your actions today and that's that's what this is so this political sphere this cultural sphere economic sphere it it may it is born out of these attitudes of inferiority and superiority and so so that's what we have to not only be aware of we have to be we have to acknowledge it and we have to be accountable to it that's why we still got laws to to protect people because you didn't do what you were supposed to do in the first place so now we got to keep correcting the record we have to keep making this thing right and as dr mark crutcher would always say you can't just be right robin you got to be righteous too you got to be righteous you can be right all day long but if you ain't righteous then you know you, you got to have both of them right. i'm done preaching i'm sorry i'm done yeah preaching. i i i'm <laughs> glad i'm glad you did uh, preach because i i think that's important and i know we get into a little bit of um genealogy and and stuff like that uh and and what uh, i guess when when i we research in our family history okay then I, like i said i ran across some good stuff and i ran across some bad stuff and uh and and and, and sometimes in, in writing the family history uh sometimes you you get some resistance from your family members not to write about the bad stuff and uh i i, I gotta I, i'm gonna give you a, a case in point and uh in which i i'm gonna credit my uh one of my aunties that goes back okay and i'm gonna i don't have to credit her for inventing uh uh um uh what you call this stuff when you do you, you identity theft i don't have to credit her with oh. <laughs> i'm serious 
serious. I have to credit her with inventing identity theft because she, back in the 50s and the 60s, okay, mm -hmm. she was committing identity theft and there was no laws back then, you know, to protect it. No, no laws. They, they didn't create the laws in the, in, into the 70s about identity theft. And she was committing identity theft left and right and not a lot. And, you know, she's committing it on family members and um, stealing their identities and getting the credit and, and putting folks in name. And, and the law can do anything about it. And she got away with it for a long time. No there was no laws on the books at that time. So, but but regardless of that, but that was a bad. And they don't want me to write about that. But, but again, uh, the bad is good because, you know, because I think that she's invented uh, identity theft that, that, that uh, some something came out of it, and I don't know what she did or not. But I didn't have, I didn't know about, I hadn't heard any cases of that from nowhere else. So I'm, I'm just assuming. <laughs> but my point is, we have to write about the good and bad about our history. That's right. That's yeah. right. And you yeah. know, that's why when you get together for family reunions, whether that family reunion is a uh, wedding, uh, whether it's at a funeral, it is still good to talk about those challenging parts of our family, the health challenging parts you know we say well how does somebody die and they go oh you know they had the new the new the pneumonia or you mm -hmm. know or, or mm -hmm. they, i guess everybody dies because their heart stops but but you know say well they they died because of um you know they had a car accident but we don't tell that they were you know what they were doing when they had the car accident <laughs> yeah. you know they <laughs> Real drunk, so, uh, <laughs> drive, driving drunk, something like that. Yeah, I hear yeah, you. yeah. So be, because we wanted to, we wanted to be informative, but we also wanted to be instructive too. When mm -hmm. we're, when we're, you know, when we're doing this, and so, um, uh, I, I remember one of my elder cousins. Uh, she told me we're talking about. I don't know how we got on this 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 subject, but we were we were talking about tithing, and I was I think I was making the you know young and not informed. I was making the case about uh, what I understood about tithing, and she said, she said to me, she said, well, you know, she said God will get it one way or the other. She said you'll be riding down the road. Now I'm eight hours from home now, right? Eight uh -huh. hours from 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 Pensacola. Mm -hmm. You're like well, you'll you'll be riding down the road, and you know you're supposed to tithe, you know. Two hundred dollars, whatever, and 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 you'll have a flat tire, and look out that that flat tire cost you two hundred dollars, and I went gun Francis now. <laughs> I'm like, is the Lord retrib got retribution like that? You know they want. <laughs> yeah, you know what, and and people believe that too, and but but I'm a student of what you believe you can conceive, okay. And, and, and let me tell you that. And and I, I my point is that it should be in, instructive, uh, 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 yeah, informative and instructive. instructive. So, yeah, but that was her. That was her deal, though. Yeah, yeah. So go ahead. <laughs> okay, but see, 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 it's the same thing I believe about about tithing. I, I believe in tithing, but my belief is that because they somebody told me that if you tithe then you get it back tenfold, something to that effect. Yeah. And I believe that. When I tithe, and it seems to me that it works out fine for me every time I tithe. But but I got a, I got a thing, Robin, and, and I swear to God, it, it works for me. Okay, mm -hmm. If I find money, you know, penny or something like that, mm -hmm. I would get some unexpected money from somewhere. It has worked. Every I, I know I know it's in my mind, but what you believe is is that you can make things it make things happen. And and, and I, some folks say that's crazy, you know. But, but again, it, it just I believe I don't believe in ghosts. Therefore, I never seen a ghost, right? And oh, okay. so, but the folks that do see them all the time. And so, yeah. so that's what I, I think that whatever you you have, you got the good com, committed mem, uh, mentally. And, and things can happen for you. I, I believe that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is. It is. A, uh, somebody asked me if I believe in ghosts. I said I believe in the Holy Ghost. So okay. if I can append this ghost, and I can believe it. I think we have. You know, we talk about this being uh, in the in the Christian world that this is that you're that you're having uh, this physical experience, or that you're you're a spiritual being. And so, so if you're a spiritual being, that means that you exist on another plane. Yeah. And so I believe that there are, you know, that, that I, I hear from my 
uh, parents, I, I get a feeling of, of this information. My, my father used to say, well, you just like his grandfather. He said, you just like your grandfather, because I can, mm -hmm. fi I'll figure something out without knowing. And it's, so it's, it, to me, it's in that same DNA, uh, maybe call yeah. it a spiritual DNA, but it's in that, it's in that same line. So I, I think that I do not believe that my God is small enough that it would just contain in this physical deal that this right. is earth, this universe, this whatever is past this universe, this other universes, uh, other universes have that. I think there is something higher there that is in control of, of that allows things to happen free will that I, and I, so I, I am not convinced that, that this is all there is that, that, that there are yeah. other planes in, in this. And so if I can believe in the Holy ghost, this, this spirit, this, this soul, this, this mind bending, um, creative spirit, the creator that can do all of this. And then, then, then why would I believe in, in, in so you should have no other gods before me. <laughs> right. exactly. so that's another, you know, there are polytheistic <laughs> and monotheistic religions and thoughts and, 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 and beliefs. And again, I ain't got to drink the Kool-Aid. Yeah. I got to acknowledge that they got Kool-Aid to drink, you know? Exactly. So, so that's exactly all, that, right. that's all there is. And it's all, um, as, um, uh, I, I have a book called, um, Oh Lord, I just forgot it. Um, Plato and a Pat, Pla Plato, and a platypus walk into a bar. I gifted it to somebody. It was about Eastern and Western philosophy. And so at, at the at the root of all of these different thoughts is love. Right. So whether it's Christian, uh, Jewish, uh, agnostic, atheism, uh, Hindu, Islamic, uh, uh, Islam, it's it's all, I mean, and, and name so many others. It's Rastafarian, it's, it's all love. Right. At of it is all of. So if we can agree, we ain't got to agree on the practice or the methodology, or even the theology. If we can agree on the basis of that, then we got a starting point. We can, right. as you said, we can have that conversation. It's all that, love. That is so true. And which brings us back to the point of, of um, we're talking uh, about history in general, but one of the things that, that we, uh, and the purpose of this show, is also talk about local history, the things that you probably didn't know about, about Pensacola history. And, That's right. and, 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 and Robin, I'm going to, I guess you're the expert as far as I'm concerned about local uh, black history. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to, uh, let's slide right into that, if you will. All righty. So today I thought, you know, we're heading into, um, uh may which is we recognize one of the first times that we one of the first months that we recognize the amazing contributions of our military uh civil servants um and and memorial day to remember those so i thought we would talk about it now uh we've talked about uh women's history month and the amazing contributions and uh the creative uh, musical arts performing arts and so here today we're going to talk about um, African-American militias, uh, which we know that there were two here in Pensacola, 18, uh, in the, uh, 1800s and into the beginning of the, the 20th century. Um, and so, so we'll talk about those, uh, those, those two. So that slide that you just put up, I'm going to put my glasses on here so I can see extra. <laughs> those, that's, that slide that you just put up is a depiction of one of the first uh, uh, documented, there were many, but one of the first documented um, uh, visuals of uh, an early militia. People recognize that as the beginning of the American Revolutionary War. Uh, and so that was uh, an en engraving uh, of, uh, if you have, you have that picture up, that was an engraving done, but people recognized by Paul Revere. And so uh, if you go back to the colored one, uh, the one that's in, yeah, go mm -hmm. back to the colored one that, yeah, so that one, so, so that one is one that is done. People recognize it as an engraving, uh, done by Paul Revere. And so, uh, an early, uh, militia, um, 1770, March 5th, 1770. 
and and what we know, the first American to die in in uh, for the Revolutionary War was Crispus Attucks, who was African American and Native American. And so, what this is the original picture, though, that was done. So we know that other picture is the original is the the engraving that became famous. But this is the original picture that was done by Henry Pelham. So if you go to the next slide, you will see them side by side, and you can see where you do not see, you see Crispus Attucks as, you know, done at with, without his color, even though you see the, the Bostonians and, and the red coats, you see them in the different colors, but, you, but here on Henry Pelham's on this black and white, you see Crispus Attucks as an African-American uh, man, there was African American and Native American, and so you see him there. This is how we rewrite history, and so Henry Pelham took his this black and white picture, his drawing to Paul Revere, who was at the time of, uh, an, an engraver, mm -hmm. and Paul Revere put out this engraving uh, without Henry Pelham knowing about it and claimed it as his own. And so, so it's made it into the history books and, and sort of wiped out uh, Crispus Attucks as being this first one had joined this militia. It was a, uh, less than 10 of them that were defending America against the, the, the British. And then we, of course, we, you know, all these different things that happen and we enter into the American Revolutionary War in terms of freedom. Uh, so incidentally, in Pensacola, we know about Attucks Court. Attucks Court here, that family housing area, was named for Crispus Attucks. And so hmm. we have a, our local, uh, a local connection to this first militia act from this Afri with, uh, African-American brother here, Crispus Attucks. It was going to be named, they, uh, they wanted it to be named, uh, the county or the city wanted it to be named Camilla Gardens. And a group of uh, African-Americans uh, suggested it to be named Attucks Court. I think that was either in the, I think that was in the early 40s, named it to be, uh, suggested the name to be Attucks Court. And so, so that is one of, in national, that is one of the uh, earliest militias that we have documented. And we have that connection right here in Pensacola. Wow. Okay. Yeah. 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 And so, so we'll go to uh, that, i um, trying to pull my, that, that next slide. So we have two, um, this is, this is a photo of, uh, sorry, I forgot. This is one of my favorite photos, the 25th. Uh, infantry regiment, which people know as the Buffalo Soldiers. So this is one of the earliest pictures um, from 18, 1890 and when they were in um, in Montana. And this photo, people can find this photo in the Library of Congress, but look at them just daring, bold, the brother on the floor relaxing. <laughs> they, are, they are together and they are defending in, right there in Montana. Look at that snow rounded. These brothers are defending the their country i mean so and this is one of the earliest photos of uh the buffalo soldiers and you can see them in those winter coats and why yeah. then the native americans would have called them uh termed them but the 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 buffalo soldiers and they were it was a segregated regiment from 1866 until uh, 1957. you know you know one thing uh robin that i think people don't appreciate about the accomplishments of the buffalo soldiers if it wasn't for the Buffalo Soldiers, we probably wouldn't have attained the West, you know, because they sent the Buffalo Soldiers out West to mm. uh, to do all the hard stuff and protect the park, do all that other kind of stuff. So they made a way so that the West could be tamed, if you will, and they they uh, did a lot of unknown stuff. And I'm glad you 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 mentioned the, the accomplishments because if it wasn't for them. Uh, like you said, out in Montana, out in the snow, out in the wilderness, yeah. and and uh, and so forth. So they paved the way for for folks for settlers to come behind them to do what That's they right. they needed to do. Yeah. Well, they even they even rode the way, if you will. I'm still tracing yeah. this one, but there there was an article that appeared, um, I think, in the precursor to World War One. Uh, uh, where they took a group of the 25th Infantry, and I forget which, re or the regiment, I forget which infantry it, it was, but they were on bicycles. So led by uh, a, a white officer 
Mm-hmm. It was a group of African American men, and they rode. It was it was hundreds and uh, hundreds of miles, and and they were making this trail uh, as an alternative uh, route, and so so riding bicycles. So think about going from. I think they ended up in either Kansas or I'm still so this may be a little bit off Kansas or or Missouri, um, and so think about that when you are. Uh, think of, I mean, if you ride a bike, you know, two blocks today, but think about riding across the country. No, we didn't have freeways, didn't have paved roads and the, the different terrains that you had to, to do. And think about in terms of segregation. So here they are fighting for the country and, and, and doing uh, this pilot project going across these different terrains. So going through, you know, these uh, across the, the, the Midwest and, as you said, trying to get to the, to the West. Uh, yeah. on bicycles early bicycles. but you know you know you you, you kind of put my mind back to folks like uh the, the, the escaped slaves okay and um when they had to make that same trek all the way on foot all the way up to canada and um my 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 what's what's my favorite lady name that made those trips back and forth um Oh, Harry Tubman. Harry Tubman. Harry Tubman made that trip many times back and forth on foot. They didn't have horse uh, horses or anything to to do, but but black folks have done some amazing things. In this yeah, country. traveling traveling at night, uh, trusting mm-hmm. people uh, who you don't know who would have hung out uh, if you see a particular quilt on a on a, a clothing line, or if you see a a flag in the window, or you know, or you'll you'll see go around if you see the two doors on the on the church with the big rock in the back, whatever signals they they had, and so right. traveling by night, and it would not take them. We read about it in twenty minutes. It would it would it would take them, you know, sometimes years to make this trek and the danger all along the way of of doing that of course now we've had uh uh the 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 play come through here uh and the musical henry box brown so that's been on a lot of people's mind when he shipped himself uh in the box. North. yeah that's an amazing that was an amazing story uh yeah. i'm telling you uh uh we got to tell that story uh one day that that story i, I actually uh, I, I have uh, a uh, video of it that I actually can, that I have aired on this station about okay. the whole reason why he did that and how he did that and, and so forth. That, I thought it was very amazing that he would box himself up and yeah. ship himself to freedom. That was, yeah. And they called him Box Scott. What they called him? He had a nickname. Box. Uh, Box. Henry Box Brown. Yeah. Henry Box Brown. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And so, so, and that's the, and, and I know uh, we have the, uh, the, the, the writer and the producer here, right here in Pensacola came from New York, right here in Pensacola. Um, mm-hmm. um, and then we went to a uh, black history celebration at uh, Lord, I just forgot the name of the uh, uh, Reverend Jones, Reverend and uh, the, Reverend and Reverend Jones, um, but uh, and so they did a they did a, a reproduction, a fantastic reproduction uh, of it for a dinner theater, um, mm-hmm. and so so it is is so much information, so many things, so you know to un to unbox, if you will, you know, yeah. so yeah, so and you don't know what's going to encourage somebody to to delve into history. I, I got into it because reading my my father's uh, books when my mother saying she's too young to be reading those books. And so I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm listening. Uh, uh, Cause my bedroom was next to theirs bathroom in between, but my bedroom was next to theirs. So I'm sneaking in, you know, getting my daddy's books off of his shelf. I wasn't interested in his Westerns, but he mm-hmm. had these books with, you know, called drum and Mandingo, you know, so I'm mm-hmm. like, what are these books? So, so that's right. how I got interested in, you know history i didn't know it was fiction and i just thought these are good stories you know and so you know as a as a preteen and a teen i was like oh this is interesting <laughs> i didn't mean to get you side <laughs> i didn't mean to get sidetracked but i was we were talking about the buffalo soldiers and we we're That's talking right. about right. the militias 
and so forth. So I'm gonna continue on your trick. That's right. That's right. All right. Let me <laughs> let me let me let me get back. Cause we start talking about drum and mandingo. I get in trouble. All right. You get All excited, right. huh? Get excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't know how somebody gonna get interested in history. So you have to put it, put it, put it before we can we can jump ahead and start talking about the two militias that are here. Uh, the the Florida Garfield Guards and a Wires Coordinate band uh so if you'll pull the slides back up uh we can we'll yeah so this is uh uh i always say this you know one of my favorite pictures of these are the florida garfield guards and so the gentleman at the front uh with the with that stellar hat on is we think is captain isaiah richardson who was born around 1850 in uh Conecuh county i'm still tracing his genealogy but born at around 1850 in Conecuh county uh shows up in pensacola uh, sometime after 18 uh or, or near 1880 he was a uh, uh as his father and mothers were they were farmers uh, uh he was a laborer uh, and him with him and his wife Elizabeth Richardson, uh, they raised at least we know two children. We know the names of two children: uh, Linwood, who I think was named for his father, uh, uh, and um, and Edna Richardson. So I'm still tracing their descendants. Um, and and Betsy, uh, his wife was uh, Elizabeth Betsy uh, Richardson, was a washerwoman and a and a cook. Um, and they lived on the east side, right on, on Haines Street uh, there. Um, uh, you can have a nice view of it with the freeway now. But but Captain Richardson was part of uh, earlier forces, the Butler, they call it the Butler Blues, they call it the Pensacola Guards, but they were an early militia, uh, 1800s and then 1880, excuse me, uh, to protect and serve the state of Florida. So these were African-American men, as you saw that beautiful picture, these were African-American men and um, who protected and served the state of Florida. Now, who do you think protects and serves the state of Florida today? What are they, what are those called? National Guards. The National Guard. These were, these early militias like this were precursors to National Guards today. And so that letter that is there is a 1881 letter that was written to, uh, from the Garfield Guards uh, and written to um, the city of Pensacola to, for the Pensacola Guards Colored Military Company that was organized June 22nd, 1881. And so they, they subsequently, they ended up changing their name. And here's a list of, uh, of those members. And, and the, the numbers, the members would, would um i've seen 49 here you have a list of 84, 84 it's just like yeah. any yeah yep yeah, any any military uh group where your numbers uh vary but it would be interesting i think for people to not only see the picture but to see as you had a, had up this list because in they that they their ancestors may be on there you know, and so their family member, uh, and that's a story in itself. All of those people who are defending this state, again, this is in 1881, and they end up changing the name from the Pensacola Guard or the Butler Guards after uh, President uh, and becoming Garfield Guards after James Garfield was shot uh, and then subsequently passed. Uh, and so a lot of militias you saw change their name. So there were a few militias changed their name too the Garfield Guards, what we think of in honor of uh, James Garfield. It happened around the same time, uh, so I don't have definitive information, but it's a, it's a, what do you call it? It's, it's a, it's, it's pair, it's, it's one happened, then the next happened. So we can pretty mm -hmm. much say that this is what, this is what did, but they, they defended, they, they defended, uh, they were on guard to defend Florida against, as they say, enemies foreign and domestic. Um, and they they showed up in parades. They uh, paraded in the in the streets. Uh, they paraded during parades, so military parades. And so they were a part of that uh, military that was uh, defending the 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 state of Florida. Um, and so uh, the next one is the. Uh, it's called different names, but Wires Coronet Band or Wires Creole Coronet Band. 
Ned Wire, Ed Wire, Professor Edward Wire, who's the gentleman in the front with the with the long uh, goatee uh, there, the elder gentleman there in the front is uh, Ed Wire. We see at least one or maybe two of his sons there. Uh, and so he was a music teacher, he was a band director, uh, and he led the uh, Wire Coordinate Band, which was also part of, it was a militia. If you think of how, you know, you see in the films where you see the flute player going ahead or, you know, the the uh, bassoon player or, uh, I, I'm not a musician, so I don't know what that looks like. <laughs> but you see them, you know, keeping time ahead. They were, they were a part of the 3rd Battalion. They were a musical uh, battalion. And so they would, again, they would uh, go into the musical parades um, uh, and, and perform, but they would do uh, military precision drills as well. And so these, uh, uh, they were called colored Creole African-American these uh, men were a part of that. And, and, and Robin, uh, I just want to just throw this out for, <clears throat> for a minute here. But you know, I think people got to understand and appreciate you. you they're going to ask themselves, well, what do music has to do with war and all that kind of stuff? But you know, in every regiment, somebody had to had a trombone. What do they call that? I'm, I'm not a musically inclined either. But da -da 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 -da, you know, playing. Yeah. The, yeah, and 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 uh, tap. Yeah, playing yeah, well, tap. Well, I'm, I'm I'm talking about even even when they were charging in the middle oh, of war, yeah. they had somebody playing the up front doing this, boop, 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 yeah. boop, and I never understood that. Why you alert them to where y'all surprise them? <laughs> but anyway, that's what they did. Well, well, you know, you know, it was a little different then. It was you know, you you had this uh, gentleman sort of uh, war, you know, yeah. You know, yeah, well, you would fire, you would land on a knee, and then you know, call out like you would say, you would, you would beckon or hearken to your to your troop, you know. So, so we fortunately we made advancements, uh, but that was the way that that war was fought. It was, it was, yeah, it, it you know, the effects were atrocious. I mean, we had a lot of um of deaths and things like like that, and so as we advance, you know, you hope that the death lesson and the impact. Uh, gets more pre precise, you know, yeah. but, um, often, often that, but yeah, yeah, that, that was, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> we'll go back and let's go back. You were talking about okay. Ed, Ed Wire and the, uh, Wire, we're talking yeah. about the Coronet Band and so forth. Okay. That's right. And so here's an ad from 1895 where he says, you know, talks about him being an instructor in piano, clarinet, clarinet and all string instruments. He had an office downtown there. And the ad above that in 1890, they were trying to raise money uh, for um, their uh, uh, for their uniforms uh, or excuse mm -hmm. me, for instruments, I think. Uh, and so they're talking about they cost five hundred dollars. And so, you know, these were militias, uh, but they were they have to they had to be self-sustaining and they took an oath of office just like any other mo uh, military uh, did. Uh, mm -hmm. They also were, remember, they were also a band. So they were the yep. coordinate band, but they were also a military band. Here's an ad, 1892, where I, this is Robbins now. <laughs> I call them the house band for the opera house. <laughs> <laughs> so here you see Wire's 3rd Battalion Band. And so mm -hmm. they were they were performing uh, these, uh, what do they call those? Um, uh, John Philip Sousa, uh, the 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 composer, uh, but mm -hmm. they they called him marches. So and yeah. he composed the march too. Um, I'm gonna try to get that recreated, but he he composed yeah. uh, a, a march. And like you said, keeping keeping time, keeping the troops encouraged, um, uh, keeping that cohesive group. But they they performed at the uh, opera house not only yeah. for as a military band, but also different. Um, headliners if you will they would accompany them as well you know every even today every military mm -hmm. service has its own professional band you know when you go in the military you can go in and to be up and serve you can serve your country in the band that's right that's yeah. right and we see that uh during independence day when you they mm -hmm. uh up in in washington dc when they have the band uh, the the uh, Air Force Band or like you said the Navy Band they uh -huh. they have and it is an esteemed 
rate uh rating uh right uh, it's an esteemed position yeah and and you have to work just as hard uh on your craft as you as you if you're aircraft mechanic or if you're a, a a pilot or if you're an infantry person you have to work just as hard on your craft and so that's what these that's what these uh military men did um, okay. and then you have so subsequent to that i just wanted to show a couple of pictures people may not have seen I always you know so this is henry uh brown and his son esmond who is there in the uniform and this is a world war ii picture so you know these early mil militias uh, and military folks, um, uh, they, what's the word? They may not have known them, but they inspired uh, other uh, men and women to go and serve, like you just saw uh, Esmond Brown there uh, and, and his father's store. People may not know Esmond Brown because he's, he's dead and gone as is his father, but they may have known Gilda Marvre. Yeah. And that's her father. Yeah. yeah that's her really? Father and her brother. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's her father and, and her brother. And then we also had the colored USO uh, during World War uh, II and, and after World War II. I think we have pictures of, of those uh, that was on De Villa Street. Mm -hmm. uh, so okay. you, you uh, can pull those pictures up and people can see uh, those. Oh, and, and okay. James Polkenhorn. Yep. That one of the that is a story to be told in its in itself and i know there's a book been written about uh yeah. james pork and han and but folks need to know this history that is a and um uh, i wish they'd make a movie about him that is a, an interesting story but so, again so i understand that his story was inspired uh with um or his story inspired uh in this part of a compilation in uh is it uh oh my lord red tails uh the story of the Tuskegee Airmen, the yeah, film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Starting Lawrence Fishburne uh, yeah. was in there, and uh, uh, so so his story was part of that. And one of the pilots ends up uh, going uh, um, going missing, and so his story, I understand, was the inspiration for for that. And so he was at FAMU, uh, Fam C at the at the time in his third year right uh so it would have been a rising senior and when the uh, war came he could have stayed in in college and he he felt the call of duty uh went to eglin and uh enlisted and then ended up going to tuskegee and becoming a tuskegee pilot and so uh was uh then um mia and they were on a mission and his plane uh went uh went missing uh, and I believe that's since 1944, 1945. Um, and so, so in service, he was born the same year as Chappie James, 1921. Right. Uh, and so, so yeah, so that his, his story absolutely deserves to be uh, told. Uh, his sister still lives in the, in the family home. There's retired teacher mm -hmm. still lives in the family home, beautiful home. His father, uh, they were from, um, uh, Louisiana, his father, and I believe his mother may have been from Louisiana as well. Uh, Dr. James Pokenhorn. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. All so, right. so just the, and then right after that, I think you have the picture of, uh, the, um, World War II. Yeah. So that's other pictures of, uh, James Pokenhorn, uh, in uniform there in the middle there. And then, uh, we have pictures of the USO, the color, what was called the color USO on the Villa street. It moved around. It was on one side of the street. It was on the other side of the street, but, um, uh, pictures right there. That is the colored USO 1946 mm -hmm. and 1947. It was actually supposed to be where, uh, what is Fricker Center uh, was mm -hmm. was uh, being built was actually going to be the 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 colored mm -hmm. USO. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I see these of uh, somebody looking like they're having a good time. Uh, that was from <laughs> 1946 and 47, huh? Yeah, yeah. So they yeah they they would have activities, recreation activities there. Mm -hmm. it, uh, they would have graduation, high school graduations there. Um, uh, so yeah, so it was a it was a community place, you know. Um, so yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, they were yeah, looked like they were having a, a good time. I think those are probably uh, photos where they you know said okay, we we're gonna sit here, here sit here and we're gonna stage these photos. So not that it was a <laughs> setup or anything, but that you know how you say you know okay, yeah. school pictures on you know on Tuesday. So wear your best clothes. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right. I got another interesting photograph here. We're gonna, I know we're going to talk about because we're running out of time. This is this is the photo that inspired me not only uh, to become a part of the military, but it, this is my great gr on my um, uh, grandmother's. This is my grandmother's mother and father. Uh, my grandfather Will, which is not the one I was talking about, uh, and my um, uh, and my grandmother, great grandmother Nettie, and their mm -hmm. son uh, Will uh, Jr. as well, and he was in the Navy. And mm -hmm. uh, so, and he was actually uh, on the ship that they named the Sullivan Brothers. If you recall, the the five the uh, parents had six sons, and five of them, I think, uh, were on the same ship and ended up perishing. And so he was subsequently on one of those uh, ships. But uh, I love this photo not only because of the military aspect that's my family. Um, but to look at their hands too, and the work, I mean, they have large hands and the work that they, they were farmers, they were hardworking people. And again, their story deserves to be, uh, to be told. And that's what this is about. You know, each of us, especially here in Pensacola, we have this military, uh, connection, whether it's, uh, direct military, indirect military, family member, civil service, uh, we're all impacted in this area. We're protected by, um, uh, those great folks serving at uh, NAS, at Softly Field, at uh, Whiting Field, Eglin, Herbert, and all of Duke Field, all these bases around us here in Panama City. And so we have this proud military history. It is up to us, as we talked about it, being accountable and being aware. It's up to us to share that, that history of each of ours. I met you, Vernon Watson, because you were civil service on a Naval Air Station. Yeah. And we were working on those federal uh, programs. And I, I took my cute little self over from Corey station where I was teaching. And I said, I want to, I want to be involved in this too. And so y'all took me in and, and, you know, uh, worked to share this information because y'all were trying to make sure as civilians that all of this history was shared. So whether it was women or African American or multicultural, whatever it was, y'all were a part of that history that made sure that inclusiveness was not a dirty word and that diversity uh, uh, mattered every single day. So y'all, y'all took me in. I just thank y'all for that. <laughs> yeah, we, we tried to keep, we tried to keep uh, Woke Alive back then. Um, we did recognize every month of the year, we, we, we recognized Black history, uh, women history, uh, MLK, uh, Juneteenth, uh, you know, and on and on and on, uh, uh, veterans, uh, uh, women, uh, I mean, uh, disability, uh, yeah. Native, Native American month. Oh, yep. so, so we had the inclusiveness, uh, involved. So we recognized, uh, that, uh, throughout our tenure there at, at, at NAS. So I'm, I'm really, uh, believe that people should, should know that history. Uh, yeah, and, you know, especially because you got all these people from all over the country and maybe even the world. We have, at, you know, had international mm -hmm. students there uh, as as well. And the thing that I liked about that federal program that y'all did was I'm calling it a federal program because it was, you know, U.S. government. But the thing that I liked about that was that it was not only, as we talked about early, it was uh informative it was instructive and right. and entertaining you know whenever you did something you knew that you were gonna you may laugh about something you may you know smile about something you may hear some some somebody singing or something like that or a speech but you was it was always informative and educational that's what i that's what i i mean though that, that is part of my foundation here and i really do appreciate it all right well thank you again robin we out of time but we we will be back again next month. Always be the first week in the month with uh, right. another edition of We're gonna stay. What we're gonna say? We're gonna stay woke, and we want folks to know what the history is, and particularly uh, their their local history uh, as well. So we're gonna be I, talking about beaches next month. So get your swimsuit, get your bikini, get your thong, <laughs> thong, 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 thong. Get it ready. Red, yeah, we and I'm glad you. I'm glad you mentioned that because you know, in in May we're gonna celebrate uh, Johnson Beach. They got a certain program over there for Johnson Beach. Yep. So, but we'll see you next month in in month of May. Thank you, Robbie. Thank you, Bruno Watson. Hashtag Shuga. Okay. <laughs> you know, the real history. Ooh, black history. Ooh, black history. You know.
Yeah.